In this video, we're going to talk about adding the details to add hardware to our Fender Flare. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and based on a comment that was in one of the videos, I wanted to go back and show how to add hardware detents to add hardware for Fender Flare. So this is an interesting and possibly very complicated topic, and there are a few complications that we need to be aware of. So first things first, let's go ahead and do inspect and a section analysis. And we wanna take a look at what the middle of this Fender Flare looks like. So I'm just gonna drag this over and I'm gonna say, okay. So when we were creating this, we added a little bit more material by doing a thicken inside of the forms tools. So that way we could push this out closer to the body and this allowed us to have some material where we planned on putting some hardware. But one of the issues or one of the things we're going to run into is the fact that the hardware or this section here sort of tapers or disappears as we go around. Because of that, it becomes problematic for us to use things like patterns. So this process is going to be partially manual and partially automated. And while it might not be the best option, I at least want to explore how we can do this so maybe it helps you with whatever your design is. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to begin by creating a sketch. And this was not centered at the origin, so I need to start on my sketch plane way over here. We're going to use Create, Project Include, and Project. I'm going to take the outside edge of this fender flare and I'm going to project it and say OK. Then I'm gonna use my offset option to take this and I'm gonna offset it inward. This is gonna be the location of the hardware. So we need to plan this accordingly and I'm gonna manually enter 15 millimeters, but we have to have a minus sign to make sure it's in the correct direction and say, okay. Next, while this isn't strictly required, I am going to put a point somewhere on here. Uh, I can dimension that or I can lock it in place, but for right now, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna leave it free and I'm gonna finish my sketch. The next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to create a new sketch. Now, unfortunately in Fusion 360, we have to do this step in order to project to a surface. So I'm gonna create a new sketch. The plane actually doesn't matter in this case, and we don't even need to have 3D sketch turned on. We just need a new sketch to contain the data. So we'll go to project include, project to surface. We need to select the face we wanna to project to. And for me, that's gonna be this inside face. The curves that we wanna use, this will be our offset curve. And I also wanna select that point we created. And in this case, I'm gonna choose the along vector option because the closest point is gonna to start to be problematic based on the shape. So along vector, and then we wanna select the X axis. Now, when I do this, you'll note that we have a red preview on the screen. We can see the point, we can see the entire curve. We're gonna say, okay. Now that we have that projection, if we expand the sketches, we don't need to see the original and we can finish the sketch now. The next step of this process is I wanna create an offset plane and I'm gonna select my default XZ plane. I'm gonna use the option to object and I'm gonna select that point we created. This is gonna automatically create a plane exactly where that point is on the curve. Note that we could also use the other option to create a plane along path. And we could select this as our path and simply place it wherever we want. And we could snap it to that point. Either option is gonna be fine. It really just depends on your geometry. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and use the second plane we created on that curve. I'm gonna right click and create a new sketch. I'm gonna use the slice option just so I can see the solid body inside. Then I wanna to go to create, project include and create an intersect. I'm gonna use the solid bodies option so I can easily select the entire thing. And we'll say, okay. And what this does is if we hide our solid bodies, we can see that we now have this entire curve here. I'm gonna rotate this slightly. So I want this point in my sketch and you can see where we placed our coordinate system. It didn't actually come in. So if you wanna bring this in, you can use the create, project include and project. In this instance, it's actually not going to matter because this gave us a point that we can use as a reference. So I wanna go back to the look at, which will go normal to our selection, and I wanna begin sketching. I'm gonna start at that point, and if we want, we can actually hide sketch two, the projected sketch. We don't need to see it now. And what we're gonna be doing is creating a revolve. 
So this revolve is going to come out past the outside of the fender. We're going to create perpendicular relationship. We're going to make our step. I'm going to go down past and then back to here. Then we're going to begin by using collinear between these two edges. And then we want to add some dimensions. We'll go from the revolve center to this edge here. I'm going to right click and convert that to a diameter dimension. And let's say that we're going to use a four millimeter screw here. We'll do the same thing up top right click, make it a diameter dimension. Let's say we want enough clearance for an eight millimeter head. So we're gonna say eight and a half millimeters. For these distances here, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. So I'm just gonna add some values. I'm gonna say eight and a half millimeters. I'm gonna add a value here, 10 and a half. And the main thing I want is to make sure that these go entirely through the solid body. I'm gonna hit escape to get off my dimension tool. What you should see now is we can drag this around and change the orientation. In reality, what you would want is the orientation to be normal to the fender where we're placing this. And sometimes that can be tricky, but we can use a line tool and I'm gonna drag a line tool out. And sometimes what you can do is you can actually create a tangent or a curvature relationship with your projection. It doesn't always work. It depends on where your references are. In this case, it doesn't look like it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna do this visually and I'm gonna get it roughly right. And once I'm happy with that orientation, I could continue to dimension it, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it underdefined. I'm gonna bring back my solid body, and then I wanna zoom in and I'm gonna create a revolve. When I do this, you'll notice that I wanna create this revolve and it's kind of hard for me to select through here. So I wanna make sure that I do select all three regions, make sure that you see them on the screen, and the axis is going to be part of that sketch. Instead of creating this as a cut, I actually want to create this as a new body. In most cases, you can do this as a cut, but because we have the complexity down at the bottom of the fender, I want to do this as a new body. Then I want to bring back sketch two. Now the trick here is going to be this pattern along path. It's going to allow us to take that solid body, making sure that we have the type set to bodies, and we can pattern that along our projected edge. I'm gonna view this from either the left or the right, double click my mouse wheel to center, and I'm gonna begin dragging this out. I wanna change the direction type to symmetric, and I wanna make sure that the orientation is based on the path. This means that the bolts or the solid bodies that we created will begin to rotate as they go along the path. Then I can increase the number. As we do this, there are a couple things that we should keep in mind. The number of bolts that we're gonna be using and their location. If you begin to drag this out and you find that some of them extend past the edge and that's not what you want, you can use the suppress option. You can deselect one of the check marks for any that are outside of the extents, and that will allow you to still create them along the path and the spacing that you need. We're gonna say okay, and then I'm gonna hide sketch two because I don't need to see that curve anymore. So here's the problem that we run into. You can see that the bolts where the fender starts to flare back away from the body, those are gonna be hidden inside. And you can see the same thing over here. Now it's gonna be a little bit hard to visualize. So what I like to do is go into my bodies folder, into the original body, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna change its opacity down to let's say 30%. Now as I rotate this around, I can see all the solid bodies. What I wanna do is I wanna move or rotate this solid body so that way it doesn't interfere with the geometry here. We could also extend it out if we wish but sometimes just rotating it around is best. So I'm gonna use move copy. I'm gonna select the body based on the center back position. And if the orientation of this isn't correct, you can always use set pivot to replace it somewhere else, but I'm gonna just use this to rotate. As I rotate, you'll see there is a position where the end of the bolt begins to come out. You can see the shadowing or the shading. And we wanna make sure that the position is correct. And then we're gonna say, okay. I need to repeat this on the other side. So I'm gonna double click to center and I'm gonna come over to this one. And I'm gonna right click and I wanna repeat the move command. Now, sometimes you can see if you've done a command like double clicking the middle mouse wheel, fit is actually what's in this position. So we're gonna go up here or you can hit M on the keyboard for move copy. Once again, I wanna make sure that I position this correctly and I just wanna rotate this. When we're dealing with a design like this, the position of the bolt holes isn't necessarily critical, so we can get away with doing some of this manually. And you can see here, as long as it completely comes outside of the fender, then we're okay. 
Next, I'm gonna go back to body one. And I'm gonna change the opacity control back to 100%. And you can see that those are all in good place. I'm gonna go back to a right hand view, double click my mouse wheel to fit the screen. Then I wanna to go to combine. We're gonna use the cut option. The target is gonna be body one, which is the fender flare. And then the tool bodies will be body two through body six. These are all the hardware that we added. You can see that the upper three are okay. And then these two that we manually rotated appear to be fine. We're gonna say okay. And then we're gonna review our work. So you can see here now we've got the recess for the hardware and it's aligned with the orientation of the mesh or the fender. And we can check the other side as well. And you can see right here that we have the hole and we've got the recess or the counterbore. So while we didn't have the, the very easy option of just patterning this, because of the way that the fender flare changes shape, we can still use the pattern option and then we can manually rotate any hardware that we need to adjust. There are other ways that we could do this, but I thought using the projected curve based on the offset of the outside edge was probably the best option in this case. There are loads of different ways and methods that we could go about this. And if you have a specific method that you like to use, or if you wanna see something different based on some geometry challenges that you have, please leave a comment in the video, or you can send me an email, support at caducator.com, and I'll do my best to try to answer your questions. But for now, this is gonna be it. So once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.